Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I am going to show you how I made my new dart for gun closure. I'll go into more detail as we're going, so let's get into it. Unfortunately, I made a background before I decided to come back to YouTube, so here's a quick rundown. The background consists of cocoa fiber carpet that I cut with scissors. The plants grow well in this and it's very mold resistant. I silicone this to the enclosure using aquarium silicone. I covered some of the edges with silicone and pressed in dry cocoa fiber to make it look better. The main piece of this background is this piece of wood that I gave me for a cheap price at the local pet shop. It simply looks good with a lot of structure and it's definitely completely dry. My personal guess is that it's some type of Swedish wood found in a lake that dried in someone's garage or something. I really hope so because that tends to last long. To anchor this I cut out a piece of oak wood as thick as the cocoa fiber carpet and then cut a hole in the carpet to fit the oak plate. I pre-drilled and everything outside of the enclosure, silicone the oak in place and screwed in the wood. I hope this won't mold in the high humidity, but I hardly think it would. Make sure to let the silicone cure for at least 24 hours, or more if you have a thick layer. I also got this cork bark piece that is completely loose, I'll just put that in later. I began by putting a thick layer of freshly cleaned clay balls. This is to have a layer of air under the substrate to prevent mold and to make it easier to drain. Next I added a cut piece of pipe that will act as the drainage hole. I also got this lid on it that is custom made by a cocoa fiber mat. To drain the enclosure of excess water I simply use a siphon, although it would be time saving to have some kind of outflow built in. After that I cut out a piece of weed mat, not sure about the name in English, with a hole in it for the pipe. Next I prepared some charcoal by smashing it with a hammer. Make sure that the charcoal is wet when you do this, otherwise you're going to have a lot of dust. I put a generous layer of charcoal above the weed mat. This is to reduce bad smell and so on. It basically works like activated carbon but is much cheaper. I got this idea and many others from Serpro Design on YouTube. Check them out if you want to. Next it was time for the substrate. For dark frogs I like to go with substrate that consists mostly of pine bark. In Sweden pine bark is a common substrate for dark frogs that some people only use in their dark frog tanks. I'm not completely sure about why, but if I would pick a guess it would be a bit too compact because of the dark frogs high humidity requirements to have something like cocoa fiber. I'm not sure about the exact amounts uh, that I used in my mixture, but if I would pick a guess, I would say about 25% cocoa fiber, 40% pine bark, and 35% exoterra forest moss. I would recommend sphagnum moss instead, the forest moss can smell terrible in the beginning and it's worse to work with. Now it's time to plant the enclosure. I started off with this philodendron erubescence cutting. I hope this will grow to the lid and provide a lot of shady places for the frogs. This plebodium actually didn't do too well in this setup. Almost all the leaves fell off in like a week so I decided to take it out again. I will replace it with something else to fill up the volume. My best theory is that the substrate needs to be more compact for this species to thrive. If I put in another fern at that spot, I will add some extra cocoa fiber in that corner. Then I added this bromeliad that I have no idea what species it is, but it looks cool. To attach bromeliads, I use stainless steel wire and later go over it one extra time with cyanoacrylate superglue. It's safe for animals as long as they let it dry first. I also added a few other bromeliads. Then I added the leaf litter. 
This time I used beige leaves. I cooked the leaves for about 15 minutes before using them, but I honestly don't know if that is necessary. It kind of depends on where you live, what bugs is in your area, and so on. This Ethereum species from Madagascar and the little ficus pumula cutting was also introduced. Lastly, I added a Cryptanthus bivitatus on the floor. If you're curious, the cleanup crew contains springtails and an isopod species that was simply labeled as Panama isopods. I don't know the scientific name, but they are amazing cleaners and that's all I care about. I'm really satisfied with the bigger plants that will take up most space, but this build is far from complete. I like to do my big enclosures with a lot of cover and buskage like ferns and stuff, and I'm sure the frogs will appreciate it as well, and I have some other to add. The saying, the more hiding spots you give, the more you will see your animals, is probably quite accurate here. I also want to add a lot more of the smaller plants for extra structure and some cool micro orchids. The wood piece just looks so empty now. The frogs I will keep in here is a pair of Dendrobates tinctorius Aziris. I actually already have them in a temporary enclosure since I ra rarely find sixth pairs from trustworthy sellers close to where I live. So when I got a chance I couldn't resist but I will wait for about a month before adding them to the setup so the plants can establish and I can make adjustments. So, I hope you all enjoyed this video, feel free to share, like and subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one.